This video lesson will solve free response question number six from the 2013 AP Chemistry exam. The question shows a table of, uh, of physical properties for two different uh, chemicals. However, the, the chemicals, as you note, have the same empirical formula, uh, but they have quite different solubilities and boiling points, and therefore they are most likely structural isomers of each other, meaning that they have the same uh, empirical formula or numbers and types of atoms, but they have very different structures, which leave, lead to the uh, different physical properties. The first part of the question simply asks you to complete the Lewis electron dot diagram for the molecule in box X. And this should be relatively straightforward. Each hydrogen, of course, gets a single covalent bond shown with a, a single line. The carbon to oxygen and carbon to carbon uh, must be single bonds. Carbon can form only four bonds. And the oxygen to uh, hydrogen bond is also a single bond. All the hydrogens are terminal. Now, if you count up the number of electrons in this structure right now, two for each line symbolizing a single covalent bond, that's a total of 16. And uh, if we count up the number of available uh, valence electrons for these atoms in the structure, it's 20. Therefore, we have two more pairs to get from 16 to 20. So we're going to give oxygen uh, two lone pairs, shown here. And uh, this obviously is, is a, a molecule you should be familiar with. It's ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Uh, the ethane group is the C2 single bonded group, and then this is the alcohol group right here. The second part of the question is asking you to draw a Lewis electron dot diagram for the other compound, which is a structural isomer of uh, the compound we just drew in box X over here. Now, um, th what this means is you have to put this functional group, the alcohol, or the, uh, the I should say the oxygen, somewhere else in the molecule. But notice if you put it in any other hydrogen location, it is uh, essentially the exact same molecule. So the oxygen cannot be terminal to one of the two carbons. It must be in between the two carbons. So we can draw this molecule, carbon single bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to another carbon. I'm not going to draw the H's for hydrogens, but each one of these is an H. And again, now we have a total of 16 uh, electrons in the single covalent bond, so we need two more to make it 20. And so the uh, correct structure is this. Now this is an ether. An ether always has R groups uh, on either side of an oxygen, and these are both methyl groups right here. So uh, this is called dimethyl ether. Question B states, on the basis of the two Lewis dot diagrams you drew in part A, the two structural formulas drawn, uh, identify which compound in one or two shown in the table up here are uh, shown or drawn in box X or box Y. Now, I chose the following. Box X must be compound two. Box Y must be compound one. Here's why. Uh, in compound two, notice it, it is more soluble, first of all, and has a higher boiling point. And therefore, it probably forms stronger intermolecular forces, higher boiling point, and probably forms uh, hydrogen bonds with water. If we look at the two structural formulas, look at the one on the left in ethanol, box X, the alcohol group always forms hydrogen bonds with water because of this highly electronegative oxygen shown here. And so uh, we can justify, and remember that's an important part of this question here, is that justify your answer in terms of the IMFs present in each compound. That's important. So you need to detail which IMFs are present in each compound and between water, if between those uh, L, uh, compounds and water, uh, if you're talking about the solubility. So box X, I wrote strong hydrogen bonds, strong IMFs can form between ethanol molecules. So between molecules of ethanol, which will lead to a higher boiling point because the attractive forces between the molecules are, are greater. Therefore, you need more energy or a higher boiling point to break those attractive forces. But also those hydrogen form bonds can form between ethanol molecules and water molecules, which would lead to a higher solubility. In box Y uh, uh, is compound one. You have weaker, you don't have hydrogen bonds present. So notice the uh, oxygen, while the oxygen is present and will form a dipole, 
uh, there will be no strong hydrogen bonds formed because the oxygen is not bound up with a hydrogen within the molecule and therefore can't form hydrogen bonds between molecules of dimethyl ether. ether. But uh, there will be some dipole, dipole-dipole bonds formed. So they do form weaker dipole-dipole IMFs with both water and with other dimethyl ether molecules, but these attractive forces are weaker, and therefore the solubility will be less than ethanol, and the boiling point will be a whole lot lower. In fact, if you notice the boiling point, shown here, minus 24 degrees C, uh, the compound has already boiled at room temperature, and therefore dimethyl ether is a gas at, uh, at standard room temperatures. Okay, next one here. Oh, it's still recording. Parts C and D uh, move on to two completely different uh, molecules. Um, both are uh, chlorinated hydrocarbons. Uh, one is carbon tetrachloride shown on the bottom here, uh, CCL4, and the other is dichloromethane. So these are both methane hydrocarbons with either two or four chlorine substitutions for the hydrogen. Now, dichloromethane has a higher solubility. That's not shown in the chart, but is detailed in the question. It has a higher solubility than carbon tet does in water. Why? And in, in particular, explain this with respect to IMFs between the solutes and water. This has to do with polarity of the molecule. Dichloromethane is a polar molecule. As you can see, you've got two highly electronegative chlorines on one side of the molecule, so this will be partially negative. And on the other side of the molecule, you've got two hydrogens. This will form a partial positive pole. Um, and because dichloromethane is polar and carbon tet is nonpolar, dichloromethane will form stronger dipole, dipole, dipole intermolecular forces with hydrogen. And uh, carbon tet being totally nonpolar will only form weak London dispersion forces. By the way, you can abbreviate that as LDF on the uh, AP exam, and that's completely acceptable, LDFs. Uh, so weaker London dispersion forces or even induced dipole forces will form between uh, carbon tet and water. And therefore, because dichloromethane forms these stronger polar interactions, dipole-dipole uh, interactions with water, dichloromethane is more soluble. Part D uh, asks a similar question. In terms of intermolecular forces, why is it that dichloromethane has a higher vapor pressure uh, and uh, obviously a lower boiling point than carbon tet? This is a little counterintuitive because dichloromethane is a dipole, and you'd expect the strong dipole-dipole interactions would be stronger than the weak London dispersion forces between carbon tet molecules. However, um, the evidence suggests otherwise. The, the boiling point of carbon tet is higher, and it has a much lower vapor pressure than dichloromethane. That indicates that the intermolecular forces are stronger between carbon tet molecules than they are between dichloromethane. So it's slightly counterintuitive. Uh, what I wrote is this. The uh, London dispersion forces in nonpolar carbon tetrachloride must be stronger than the weak dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces between dichloromethane molecules. The final question uh, is as follows. Complete the Lewis electron dot diagram of formaldehyde, or methanol, shown in the diagram below. Molecules of methanol can form hydrogen bonds in water. Uh, and I've already drawn this. Um, what's shown here is the hydrogen bond as a dashed line. And they specifically ask, use a dashed line to represent the hydrogen bond. And what they're looking for in this question is that you understand the, the different poles of polar molecules. Oxygens are always highly electronegative. So that's a partial negative pole. So in water, the oxygen is partial negative. Hydrogens form partial positive poles. And so the partial positive pole of the hydrogen forms the hydrogen bond which again is not really a bond, it's just an electrostatic attraction between the partial positive hydrogen pole and the partially negative uh, oxygen pole on the formaldehyde molecule. 